So I recently shared um, this this UI piece that I made in Nuke. I was just kind of mucking around, um, and I and I decided just to kind of like play around, put it in 3D space, and do some depth of field, add some glow as usual to try and get comps looking good, <laughs> um, and, and it kind of people seem to like it. So what I thought I'd do is just run you through the Nuke script. Um, as well as kind of another tool that I use to actually create it, which I thought might be quite useful. Um, if you want the Nuke script as well, it's on my website, compostingpro.com, and you'll also be able to grab the Nuke script, grab the elements, and then watch this video as well. So hopefully that's useful. So first of all, what I've done basically is I have created these images. Um, you can see we've got this kind of image here, then I've created these kind of textures, which I'm actually using as alphas. So there's the color, there's the texture, alpha texture, there's some like dot stuff, um, and there's another color. And the great thing is with this is, because I've used this as an alpha here, what we've got when I pre-molt is you see you get all these really nice colors, because all it's doing is basically taking this as your transparency or your alpha channel, and then taking this as the color. Now when you pre-molt, it's basically just gonna cut it out with these shapes. Um, so you get some really nice colors there. Um, and I've done this with all of them. So I've literally got some kind of lines here, as you can see, and some more dots here. Uh, so some of you might be wondering kind of what I use to create these. Uh, so what I found is it's this tool called JS, JSplacement, or JS Placement. I think it's probably JSplacement though. Um, and it's really amazing just to generate these patterns. So you just hit generate here. Um, so I've been using the dot grid. Uh, so you just click to generate and then you can kind of set what type of shapes you want and the chance of drawing. Um, if I'm honest with you, I don't really know what these are doing too much. I mean, obviously this is kind of, do you want these shapes? But I'm just kind of playing around with it here, um, getting something that looks nice. Um, so that was what I was using for the alpha channel here, uh, with this one. And then I believe what I was using for the lines was one of these, yeah, this one. Um, and I was using that to kind of create this, this kind of effect. Um, so again, just kind of playing around with it. You can also toggle colorizer, which gives it some color, which is kind of cool. So you might want to play around with that as well, but it's pretty fun to play around with. And this is something I found that people are using to make kind of normals and displacement maps um, in 3D software to kind of like, to then, sorry, bring into 3D software to displace geo and make it look kind of just procedural, nice little agreeable type things. Um, but again, it, I, just, <laughs> I, uh, I just thought, well, I can kind of use this for Nuke now. Um, so then also what I was using is I was using uh, this one here to get these patterns um, like this. Now they're obviously black and white at first, but again you hit toggle color and you can just color them in however you want, which is really awesome. Um, so yeah, so that's how I made my patterns and it was really quick again doing this. It was literally like a little 20 minute test I did when I had some renders going. Um, so I just knocked out a load of those patterns. I'm going to just put a load for you to download if you want them, but again feel free to grab this. I'll put a link. Um, on Composting Pro where to find this little bit of software. It's completely free, so it, it's it's really cool, really cool. So once I had that, I then copied in the alpha from here. I'd probably want to throw a clamp node in after this grade, um, simply because if I'm doing a gain or a multiply, those are going to be, there's a possibility my alpha could go above one. Obviously, I'm actually gaining down and multiplying down here, but I always just would throw a clamp node in there just to make sure. And then we're copying the alpha in, so we've got our color channels here, then our alpha, and then we just throw a pre in to cut that out. And that's what I'm doing the whole way across for everything here. Um, so we've now got this, this one, these nice little dot pattern. I mean, these look really cool, these. Um, so there you go, so that that's that. And then I've then got those on cards. Um, so what you should be able to see here is I start kind of layering up these cards basically. And the reason why I've wanted to layer them is so that you get a really nice kind of like depth of field effect on them. Um, and all this is, is because they're stuck on the card, if I scale up the card, the image on that card will scale up as well. Um, but in this case, I've literally just taken the same card, duplicated it a few times, copied it across, and then moved it up and down. Um, and then what I've done is I've then just whacked a camera in, as you can see, it's kind of at a bit of an angle, and then we're then rendering that out. So this is what we get. Um, and then again, the nice thing is about this is because I'm throwing it through uh, Nuke's 3D space, 
I now get Z defocus on this thing. So, well, I actually get Z depth, sorry, and then I can apply Z defocus. So what we want to do so that we can use our Z defocus node and use the uh, depth or direct, I think it should be set to depth here. Um, I've used direct, it probably just gave me a slightly nice result, but yeah, you'd want to go to depth is you actually have to do one over depth.z after the scanline render node. And that basically just converts the, the depth pass there to the values that Nuke expects when you're doing depth. So it's kind of going to go from zero to five or whatever units it's in. Um, it's just going to reverse what the scanline render node is doing. So you can use that depth math there. Um, so there you go. Now, we don't need any of those channels anymore. I mean, some people before <laughs> have picked me up on my scripts because you can see here, this purple box here is the depth pass. That means your scanner and render is kicking out depth. And these two here mean it's kicking out motion vectors. So if you don't need those motion vectors and you want to be super efficient, just turn that off and you're going to be good to go. Um, and then I've also thrown a remove node in here and just set it to keep RGBA. And that will now get rid of that, that depth channel basically, um, which is really cool. I then added some uh, exponential glow here because that's always good. And then I've just hue shifted it. And what this allows me to do is just change the color of everything kind of quite uniformly. So you can see I can really go a bit crazy with it here. Um, and then lens distortion, old lens distortion. If you want that, I believe it's X and then you type lens distortion. I think it's one of those. And then it should bring it in. Maybe it's a capital L. Because uh, the new one's a bit naff for bringing in, for doing this kind of a thing where I wanted to kind of just drag and make some lens distortion. Um, so yeah, so hit X and type that and you get the old lens distortion node um, and then yeah, and then I've just thrown some grain on it. Um, so uh, in regards to the ZD focus, let me just quickly show you uh, what you'd want to do if you're new to this. Copy it to the side. Uh, if we view this, we're just going to set it to depth because again, that's the calculation, the measurement that this is in. Um, it's a little bit like telling Nuke if you're going to measure a car, is it going in kilometers an hour? Is it going in miles per hour, etc.? And that's what you're kind of trying to tell it here. Um, so, so that's what that's for, just to make sure your depth's going to be kind of looks correct and accurate. And then originally, you'd want to do the focal plane setup here. Um, and, and what this is doing basically is it's kind of telling you the green's going to be in focus and the red and blue are kind of behind or in front of that area. Um, now I could obviously drag this up so that more stuff is in focus there and I can just adjust the size um, and the maximum. The bigger this maximum is, the slower your renders are generally going to be. Um, so there you go. And wherever I drop this basically, all it's doing is it's sampling a value from my depth pass and dropping it in here. Um, so there you go. Now a cool thing is what you might want to do here is you might want to kind of animate this right so that you have this kind of like wipe or something so this is in focus at the start and then this is in focus at the end. You can totally do that. Right click up here, hit set key, then go to frame like 30 or something and then drop that all the way back and you can see now we'll have this traveling in focus point. So now once you've got that you then go to result and you'll see now my in focus bits here as I go to this bit, my in focus bits at the front and this is out. So you can completely play around with that um, as much as you want. And something you might want to do is just find a nice filter. Uh, something we do in the industry is if you have access to the optical flares uh, node, you can actually go in there and get the kind of like bokeh shapes and plug those into the filter here to get some kind of more natural looking um, defocus, but it's completely up to you. So yeah, so there you go. So that's how you'd set up your Z defocus. And that is how I set up my UI shot in Nuke. And again, if you have a like, I hope you enjoy playing around with it. Go through my Nuke script and really make sure you understand it. Um, and if you end up making anything, just share it on LinkedIn or Twitter or something and tag me in it. I'd love to see what you kind of do with, with this stuff.